Hey YouTube, this is Ian from Big Rock ADV. Today we're going to talk about very, something very important for your R1200 GS. So if you own one of these GSs, there's a very important piece of preventative maintenance that you need to do. Now the dealer is not, probably not going to tell you about this and they're not going to do this as part of your service. It's something that's easy to do on your own, but it can save you major, major headaches down the line. So what we're going to talk about is lubing the final drive lines. So those things are in here under this little gator. I'm going to tell you why this is important and I'm going to show you how to do it in an easy way. Let's jump in and get this done. Okay, so just real quick, the reason that you guys need to do this on your bike is that there's been a lot of reports of riders, especially riders who ride in the rain or in wet conditions or ride through a lot of puddles or things like that, where the splines have um, rusted and kind of seized up into the drive shaft here. So we're going we're gonna to show you the detail of that, uh, but you really don't want that part rusting up. It can be an expensive repair um, if you're out of warranty, and even if you're in warranty, you might have to fight with BMW over it. Um, I don't know why BMW doesn't uh, really recommend the service or show it in their service schedule uh, like they do the final drive oil, uh, but this is something that, that you really need to do. It's easy to do on your own. If you want your dealer to do it, they can. Um, so my bike only has 3,000 miles on it, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and do this because I view it as a preventative maintenance. It's an area that needs to be greased and cleaned and uh, I don't want to have any problems with rust. Now I ride my bike quite a bit in the rain and in the mud puddles and things like that as you guys have seen. So I think it's important for me to look at this. Uh, my friend Bill uh, up in LA, he has a new 1250 and I think he had less than 10,000 miles on his bike. He, he rides a lot and his was already seized up to the drive shaft which really sucks. Um, so anyway let me show you guys the tools that you're going to need to do this okay so here's the tools you're going to need now if i miss something i'll add it in later but i think this is everything you're going to need um, a rag as always you're going to need some grease you want to use grease with molly in it i've got some full synthetic uh, grease here it's really important to get the molly molybdenum is a mineral and it helps with lubrication so you want to get that molly grease you're going to need, you know, BMWs have torque sockets, so you're going to need a variety of all your different uh, torques sockets here. You're going to need a couple uh, ratchets, got a couple 3 h inch ratchets. You're going to need probably a quarter inch ratchet maybe for some of the smaller torques. Uh, just a couple of extensions for your ratchets. You're going to need a bungee cord or something to hold up the uh, brake caliper because we're going to take that brake caliper off. You're going to need uh, some wire, some soft wire. Uh, don't use a good USB cord. This one was going to the trash. Uh, this is going to be used to hold the uh, spline up when I reinsert the final drive. And uh, I think that's it. If I miss something, I'll, I'll add it in later. But uh, let's go ahead and jump in and get this thing started. Okay, so the first step in this procedure is to remove the rear mud guard. So to do that, there's three Torx bolts here. We're just going to take these off real quick. Okay, so we got that we got that off. Now my style when I take something off like this, I like to put the screws back in where they were. This just helps me keep track of uh, where things went. Cause you know, you get all these different uh, screw lengths everywhere and I always get them mixed up and put things back together wrong. Not that I've ever done that before, but um, so put these back in here. Uh, and the next thing we're gonna do is uh, take off the uh, rear wheel. Okay, so to remove the rear wheel on a, a GS, uh, what you're going to do is um, get a T50 Torx socket, put it on a small extension on a ratchet, and there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five Torx bolts you remove, and the wheel and the hub pulls off. So let's go ahead and get this done. Oh, by the way, you need to either put the bike in gear or put the bike on the side stand uh, so that the tire can't move because when you go to take this off, the rear wants to spin obviously with the torque of the wrench. So um, go ahead and do that. I have the bike on the center stand, so I just put it in gear.
Okay, so one thing you might run into, and this is the water-cooled GS, by the way, 2013 and later. My bike is a 20, uh, 2017.5. But what happens is sometimes with these bikes is that you go to pull the rear wheel off and there's a clearance issue between the exhaust pipe and the brake caliper. So when I try to pull this out, I can't get it out because it's getting stuck on the brake caliper and the exhaust. I'm sure if I yanked hard enough, I could pull it out, but why risk anything? Um, it's better just to pull off the brake caliper and then this wheel will come out of the way. Um, I have been able to get it off before without doing that, but maybe this tire is wider or something. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull this brake caliper off, which is something you have to do anyway for this procedure. Okay, so to get the brake caliper off on the GS water-cooled, um, the first thing I do, there's this little speedometer wire sensor here. You can kind of see, maybe it's kind of dark. Um, but this has, this is captured by this little br metal bracket on the brake caliper. I go ahead and just pull that off from its little guide um, bracket so that it, when I pull the caliper, it doesn't yank the, uh, the speedo cable. The speedo sensor is something else we're gonna have to take off too. So to take off the brake caliper, um, find the appropriate uh, Torx bolt here, which looks like... Okay, so it happens to be a T40. So take your T40 and take these two caliper bolts off. See, this is a little metal bracket I was talking about. This this helps guide the, uh, the Speedo cable wire. So we'll set this aside along with the brake caliper bolts. Now, in order to get the brake caliper off, we're gonna to have to kind of position the rear tire a little bit. So you kind, of, you kind of have to get your rear tire out of the way and then go ahead and pull off the caliper like this. And what I'm gonna do is take this bungee cord here, find some way to secure it to the caliper. Sometimes, okay. Sometimes it's hard to find a spot to hook this to, but you want to hook this up, just hang it up uh, out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and hang it up here on my luggage rack. So now that's nice and out of the way. Again, pull the speedo, if the speedo wire is here, pull that out. Okay, so now we can, now we can pull our rear wheel off because we got the uh, brake caliper out of the way. Let's set your rear wheel aside. Okay, so I can't really be in the photo, sorry for that, but the next step is to take off the speedometer sensor uh, wire here. This little magnetic sensor here, it's hard to see in the video, but there's this little Torx bolt holding it in. I wanna pull this off and secure this up out of the way because what happens is when you drop the final drive, this thing could have tension on it, you could possibly damage your speedometer cable, and you don't want that. So of course it's always a different size than what you had before. Let's see if it's that size. Yep, okay, uh, T30. So go ahead, it shouldn't have much torque on it. Go ahead and pull that bad boy off. And then your speedometer sensor simply comes out. Mine has uh, oil on it uh, because that's right, um, in here is the uh, final drive. So actually it's got some final drive oil on it. Try not to get oil on your brake disc, by the way. Okay, I had to take a break to get a couple of essential accessories. Um, I realized that because when you take the speedometer sensor off, it exposes a hole in the final drive, that when I drop that final drive, some of the oil might fall out. I'm not sure. You know, it's best to do this procedure uh, at the same time as, as changing your final drive oil. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna remove this bolt here. Uh, this is the uh, pair lever, I think they call it, or whatever. This this bolt that holds this torsion arm torsion arm on here uh, to allow the final drive to drop down, uh, so we can go ahead and get to those splines. So we're going to remove this bolt. It looks like a T50, probably torque. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this bolt here does not have a nut on the other end, so you're simply gonna remove it. But I think it has quite a bit of torque on it, so be careful.
So I've almost got this bolt here that holds this arm in place and holds the final drive up. Um, I haven't actually done this procedure before. I know I'm kind of faking my way through this to make it look good. Um, but when I pull this out, I'm not sure if the final drive is gonna really drop or not, but we're about to find out. So just be ready to support it in case it wants to drop down. But I guess if your splines are rusted, then it won't drop down. But I'm hoping that my splines are not rusted. I actually don't know, that's why I'm doing this. So I'm just gonna hold the final drive with my knee here. Okay, take that bolt out. I don't really see thread locker on it, but it uh, maybe it's just kind of seized up. Now see, so on my bike, it's probably good news that the final drive is wanting to drop down. Here is, I've got the final drive dropping a little bit. This is separated. So now we can go ahead and um, remove this boot. I think you remove it from this side. I may try to brush out this dirt here in this boot. Um, before I go ahead and remove it. I think probably carefully remove it with your fingers or a screwdriver, it's got like some clips. We'll go ahead and pull this gator back and try to push this final drive down a little bit more. And then uh, then we'll get to our spline. So uh, hold on here a second. Okay, so update, a couple of developments. So I went ahead and pulled this rubber boot off. As you can see it's got these clips, it's kind of tight. You have to pull it off from this surface here. And then my final drive, I gave it a little bit of wiggle and it disengaged the splines and started to drop down. Now I did, I am, uh, it did start draining up my final drive fluid just as I predicted through that speedometer sensor hole. Okay, so let me zoom in here and give you a view of the splines. So there's the splines where the drive shaft fits in. Now you can see on my bike, uh, they're kind of dirty. They actually are a bit rusty. You can kind of see, I've got my light trying to shine in here um, the best I can and yeah, they're a little bit rusty, which is not good, not a good thing. This bike only has 3,000 miles on it. So I'm really glad I'm doing this and it's kind of dirty. Okay, and here's the uh, drive shaft side. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I can't really get the camera at the right angle. So, the input side or the drive shaft side is kind of dirty, uh, not rusty on that part. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is uh, get this cleaned up, um, get the rust off of it, get the dirt off of it, grease it up, and then we'll be back in a little bit. We're back, so what I've done is I, I took some brushes and some rags and I cleaned up the splines the best I could, uh, trying to get them uh, the rust out and, and any sort of grime and stuff out there really really dry i was actually quite shocked to see how dry these things were i truly was not expecting this and this is not staged or anything i i'd never taken this off before my bike has 3,000 miles on it it's a 2017 and a half uh, maybe this is an issue with the newer bikes i don't know um, but my friend bill had a similar thing and i've seen some other people with dry splines so if you have a gs um, really get this done uh, anyway so i've got it lubed up uh, that's the uh, input side or the drive shaft side. Now let me swing around and show you the uh, final drive side. Okay, so this is the final drive side. I've got this cleaned up the best I can. I've got the splines lubed up here. So now we're gonna go ahead and reassemble this thing and uh, get this thing back on the road. We're ready to reassemble this thing. Now this is gonna be a little bit of a tricky move. We've got a few things going on here. You've got the rotation of the final drive uh, here that you can actually rotate by hand. Um, by turning this, it's kind of hard, but turning this uh, inside this big hole here, um, or on the other side, probably with the brake disc too, but try not to get oil on your brake disc if you can avoid it. I already did, so I'm gonna have to clean it. Um, then you've gotta align those splines with the splines on the drive shaft itself. So you're gonna have to kind of screw with it as you're lifting it up and get that thing popped into place. Uh, the other thing I've got going on is I, I didn't, you know, I've got this final drive oil situation, so I'm gonna have to, um, be cognizant of that as I lift this up. Um, have, I'm gonna have this bolt, uh, this pair lever bolt here for this arm uh, in my hand or right beneath. So when I get it lined up and I get it pulled into place, I can go ahead and pop this bolt through and keep it secured. I'll worry about the boot and everything um, towards the end. So let's try to get this thing done. This is probably gonna be a pain in the ass. Okay, so you remember that wire I told you guys about? This is that wire. Now this is, I tried to do this without the step and it didn't work. 
what's happening is the drive shaft here wants to sit here in the bottom of the swing arm, but then it doesn't line up with the splines from the final drive. So you're gonna have to take this piece of wire, uh, wrap it around the bottom of this, and you're gonna have to, as you're, li as you're bringing the final drive up, you're gonna have to lift this friggin' annoying thing up into place and get this thing get this thing lined up now the other you're doing that and you're also screwing with uh, um, the alignment of the final drive the rotation to get the splines to line up so you're kind of doing a couple things at once and it's kind of a pain in the ass but let's see if we can do this Some time later, we were not going to say how much time it took me to get this damn thing back together. Um, but what I found worked was BFH. Actually, this is just a rubber mallet. Um, holding it up, I abandoned the car jack idea because it was putting too much pressure on the joint and not allowing it to slip together. Um, but once I kind of lined it up with my hands on both sides and used the wire to hold that hold that drive shaft up like I showed you. And I kind of used this. Once I felt it was kind of aligned, I kind of gave a tap to the bottom of the uh, final drive here like this. Make sure to use a rubber mallet, not an actual uh, hammer. Uh, and then it, I was able to get it popped in. Um, you'll feel it once it slides in and it, and it pulls up. And then again, put this uh, bolt through here uh, so it doesn't fall back down again and you have to do it all over again. That would be bad. So the next thing is um, get a screwdriver or whatever and pop this, actually this, uh, we'll pop this gator back into place. See, it just pops back in with your hands. You don't need tools because if you use a screwdriver, you're probably going to puncture it. So gator's back on. We're going to go ahead and just reverse what we did. So we're going to put the power level bolt back through. Then we're going to put the speedometer sensor back on. Uh, we'll get our wheel back on and then our brake caliper last. Um, so not too bad. Okay, so I got this bolt here, tightened torque back up to spec. Um, notice that it also has one of these clips here for the speedometer cable. I've got the speedometer cable or wheel sensor, whatever you call it right here, bolted back in. Make sure you get that belt bolted back in. Now for me, I got some kind of grease on my rotor, which was uh, really bad, but uh, I'm gonna need to go ahead, before I put the caliper back on, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the rotor off with some brake cleaner um, and maybe even some very, very fine grit sandpaper to get that, get all the oil off of there. So uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I got this bolt here, tightened torque back up to spec. Um, notice that it also has one of these clips here for the speedometer cable. I've got the speedometer cable or wheel sensor, whatever you call it right here, bolted back in. Make sure you get that belt bolted back in. Now for me, I got some kind of grease on my rotor, which was uh, really bad, but uh, I'm gonna need to go ahead, before I put the caliper back on, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the rotor off with some brake cleaner um, and maybe even some very, very fine grit sandpaper to get that, get all the oil off of there. So uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, something to note real quick on reassembly. Put the caliper on uh, over the disc and tighten it down with the bolts. Um, at the same time, align these, uh, uh, the speedometer cable, which you can see there in those clips. Do that but while you've got the rear wheel inserted between the brake disc and the muffler, but, not, but before it's bolted on. Because if you bolt the wheel on, you might not be able to get the caliper in. You want that wheel loose, um, but sitting between the uh, muffler and the, uh, and the drive shaft, if that makes sense. So now um, I've got the caliper bolted on. I've got the speedometer cable routed properly. Now I'm going to bolt the wheel back on, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the mud guard back on, and then we'll be done. Okay, so we're done with the job. Uh, just a few things. Make sure that you know your wheel is on tight, your brake calipers are on tight. Every time you finish an important job like this, make sure you don't have any extra parts or any extra bolts. Make sure you put everything back together right. Check your torque specs in the manual or online. Make sure you torque things properly. 
and uh, just do a once over to make sure that you didn't leave anything out because when it comes to wheels and brakes those things are really safety items so um, I was really shocked to find my splines that dry and that rusty uh, the bikes you know only a couple years old only 3,000 miles on it if you ride a GS uh, water-cooled bike I'm not sure if this applies to the earlier GSs, the oil-cooled ones, I'm not sure. Uh, but if you ride a water-cooled bike, I'd recommend, if you haven't already, pulling the uh, pulling the final drive uh, down like I did, checking those splines, getting them lubed, getting them checked out, because if that all seizes up, uh, you're going to have a real problem down the road. Um, pretty easy job to do, except for the finicky part of getting the uh, final drive made it back to the drive shaft splines. Um, but again, just wiggle it around, kind of tap it, and, and you'll, get, you'll get it in. Use that wire to hold up the, the drive shaft uh, uh, rod too. So um, anyway, I hope this video was useful if you guys have a GS. If you have any questions or if you have any experience of your own to share about the splines on your bike, please do put that below in the comments. I'm really interested to see how many of you have had this issue. Uh, and as you guys pull these off and do this procedure, uh, let me know how they look because if this is a problem, we should say something to BMW about this because it's not right that they don't put enough grease on this from the factory. Um, if you have any insights or if any of you work for BMW, put that in the comments or send me a message. Um, thank you guys. This was Ian from Big Rock ADV. Ride safe and we'll see you next time.